Well, just off of Brookshire Freeway on Beatty's Ford Road is a building that was once the social scene for Charlotte's black community, but now it's an abandoned building. Thanks for coming back for the news at 530. I'm Colin Mayfield and I'm Vanessa Rufus as WCNC Charlotte's Jane Monreal shows us if the walls of Excelsior Club could talk, there would be plenty of stories to tell. From the mailroom to the clubhouse really is the story of James Robert McKee when in 1944 he realized his dream of opening up Excelsior Club after first buying it as a house. The seed for such a dream took place years earlier in 1939 when McKee was working as a head mail clerk. Also tending bar at various restaurants around the Queen City, it is that side hustle that helped McKee hatch the idea to open Charlotte's first nightclub for African Americans. The demographic back then in the black experience was if you were a teacher or principal or preacher or a supervisor even on your job, even if it may have been in industry somewhere, you were considered rich, you know, high end, and uh, people like that couldn't go to a country club. Ken Koontz explaining why McKee started Excelsior Club in the first place. According to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Historical Landmarks Commission, by the 50s and 60s, it became a favorite watering hole for movers and shakers, from politicians to musicians, including Nat King Cole. A concerted effort. Kuntz, prior to becoming one of the club's illustrious owners in the 1980s, co-founded a TGIF event at the Excelsior, namely a $5 cover charge for unlimited drinks. We had a great run with it, and we endeared ourselves to Jimmy, and uh, we told them if you ever you know, get to a point where you really want to sell it, we'd love to have it. So that's how it initially came to be. These days, the abandoned building sits behind a chain link fence, secured by a heavy duty lock and chain, the front door boarded up, a shell of its former self. Kuntz sold his share of the club in 1987, but not before seeing the Excelsior redeemed a historical landmark. My purpose was when I bought it and told Jimmy, who was a close personal family friend before I bought it, I said, Jimmy, this needs to be preserved because Charlotte has no appreciation for history and certainly no appreciation for black history. When it comes to Excelsior Club's modern day legacy, people still talk about Dirty 30 Thursday. What we did with Dirty was, again, uh, what you see here stays here and you couldn't take any pictures that dirty because all of us are legitimate tax players during the day at night, you smack somebody like this. <laughs> For 15 years, every Thursday night until 2016, B. Thompson, already a local radio personality, helped spearhead what built up to be one of the club's most successful concepts. For me, it was fun and it allowed the side of my personality to come out that could not come out on air. So my thing in telling people also uh, what goes on at Dirty 30 Thursday stays at Dirty 30 Thursday. And that became the line that people would say to me out in the street, like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Dirty, what go on at Dirty? You know the rules. And they'll say, yep, I know the rules. So it was a, not only a friend thing, but a familial thing. This is how we roll. At Dirty! Thompson remembering groups of regulars hitting the dance floor at Excelsior every week to DJs playing old school jams from the 70s to the 90s. The place that the Excelsior and that Dirty had for a lot of people. I know of six marriages that came out of Dirty over the course of that 15 years that I did. Six marriages. Today, the future of Excelsior Club seems to be in limbo after a developer from California bought the property in 2020. One of the holdups regarding the redeveloping of the club is a question of parking. One thing is for certain, like Koontz and Thompson, many people remember what the club meant for the city's black community and hope to see it have life again. On Beatty's Ford Road, Jane Monreal, WCNC Charlotte.